we are back. We are back. And you know what? I'm so excited. I discovered that I actually could save. I actually saved that last session we just did. I saved it. Somehow it's in the archives. For uh, I don't know why. The past couple times it wouldn't. It just wouldn't let me do that. What's up, Patrick? Welcome back. Welcome back. Patrick's back. Welcome back. Oh, the art we made on Instagram. Oh, the fun we had. Yeah, he's a ham. What do you know, baby? What do you know lately? You tease him a lot. Cause we got him on the spot Welcome back Welcome back Patrick Welcome back How about a lapel pin? You got it daddy-o Lapel pin coming up Coming up Put one right here What do you think would be a good lapel Oh you know what Maybe that's where we put that shrimp The mantis shrimp It's a pin of a mantis shrimp What are your thoughts? You could have a couple, you know? Pin. Mantis Shrimp. Maybe that's the name of his biker club. Or his uh, magician society. The, the, the Mantis Shrimps. All right, hold on. Well, I'm going to do a little, little research here. Thank you for coming back, by the way, Patrick. All right, Mantis Shrimp. Here we go. Mantis Shrimp. Coming right up. You want a, you want a lapel pin? You got it. You got it. You got it. You want a lapel pin? Oh, jeez. Were you the one who... Who was it that... Okay, so someone said that poison tree frog and mantis shrimp earlier. Was that you or was that someone else? Because, dude, I can see why they said mantis... Check it out. The mantis shrimp is like the, the poison tree frog of the ocean. Look at these freaking... These crazy colors. Look at this, dude. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Dude, they are. Whoops. They're freaking... They are. They are. They're the freaking... Uh... Oh my god, they got big googly eyes too? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, dude. Okay, this is, this is just... This is nuts. The poison dart frog is definitely the mantis shrimp of the trees. And the mantis shrimp is the poison tree frog of the ocean. Okay. Oh, wow. They, they, they look like Star Wars characters. Dude, these guys look like little Star Wars characters, Patrick. They punch with the power of the sun. <laughs> That's great. They punch with the power of the sun. Oh, my God, man. They... What the hell? What the hell? They got big googly eyes. They're neon. These things are like... Dude. 
Okay, oh my god, this is nuts. Okay, I'm looking for a per... Okay, here we go. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh god, I want to get a good one. Mantis shrimp. Are you a... Uh... Are you an oceanographer, Patrick? An ocean biologist of sorts? I'm looking for a good one here that fits... All right, so first, all right, let's see. Oh, God, here we go. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. Well, okay, you know what? little guy I'm looking through all these things oh, this is just just out of sight like this is I'm trying to find a real like one that's sort of climbing up you're not an oceanographer you just you just have a uh love of the you just have a love of the of how did you, how did you become how did you even know that these things exist first of all cuz i didn't know they existed till you told me so who told you that they existed cuz i got to tell you right, i'm trying to find a good one here I'm trying to find a good one here All right. Uh, these, I can't tell if these little guys have if they get something in their mouth or if that's just part of their body. All right, here we go. Here we go. You got big googly eyes. Oh, you love to learn. Yes. No, it's very useful. It's very useful knowledge. I'm pointing at you right there. It's very useful knowledge because now we get to use that knowledge. How cool is that? Very useful knowledge. All right, so he's got a lapel pin. It's in the shape of this thing. Oh, my God. All right, all right. There we go. There we go. Googly eye. We're going to start with the googly eyes. It's interesting. We, we, we got a good theme here. It's like googly eye type creatures. Kitty, kitty. What are you crying about, little fella? Thank you for sharing the knowledge. Cox with the pox, what is up? We're adding a um, lapel pin here, uh, but it's going to be that uh, the mantis mantis shrimp lapel pin. Kitty, kitty. I mean, they really do look like Martians, you know? They they do look like they do look like Martians, yeah. That is perfect podcast material, Patrick. That's part of the. I mean, you know, it's funny. A lot of folks that be like, "What should I do a podcast about?" Tell me what to do a podcast about. Well, what do you know about? What information are you excited about? What are you passionate about? And that's your podcast. You know what, the, the, these, guys, these little guys, um, 
I will check it out. I will check it out. I will check out the Mantis Shrimp video on YouTube. I will. This reminds me of, remember in Sesame Street, the yep, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, 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 uh-huh. That's what, that's what these little guys remind me of. This is the one I'm going, this is the one I'm util, utilizing right here. These, these are all the other, like, kick-ass mantis shrimps. Um, I just couldn't seem to find one that really served, served this well. 379 episodes. Congratulations. See, when you got a lot of information that you've learned and you want to share it, it just it just flows, doesn't it? It just keeps going. Do you uh do you kind of talk off off the top of your head, Patrick, with your podcast or do you do you um do you kind of write down what you're going to talk about? Like does your po- do your do you find yourself kind of going off the cuff or do you like have have it written down and you go this is going to be what today's subject is oh not scripted yeah so wait you're saying they actually punch so when you said they punch with the power of the sun you're, you're honestly saying that they they punch yeah i don't like to edit mine i don't edit mine either you know, when you sh- when you show the the process of creation of what you're doing, it's like you know, it teaches folks. It teaches folks that everything doesn't have to be perfectly like. I love the homemade feel of stuff. Welcome back, Shaylee. We're adding right now a shrimp mantis lapel pin, Shaylee. By the way, thank you for sharing your makeup uh, Instagram. I'm very happy that you got one of those and that you're sharing your talents with the world. You're offering people the opportunity to, um, to see what's going on. You know, that's your, in a sense, that's your demo reel. I've never drawn a mantis shrimp before. Cavitation. Cavitation. Oh, that was the word that you used earlier. Cavitation. Instead of a gravitational pull, it is a cavitational punch. Something tells me, Patrick, that maybe, you know, maybe in a past life you were an oceanographer. There's still time. You know, you got a passion for it. What do you, what do you, um, what are your interests in addition to, like, you like learning? If you had a dream job, what would your dream job be, Patrick? Getting paid to podcast? Uh, uh, um, exploring the deep oceans and, and coming face to face with these astounding creatures, going into the Amazon forests? An implosion. Cavitation. It's an implosion. Oh, my God. Thank you, Shaylee. After I draw these little arms here on the, on the shrimp, I'm going to show you... I'm going to show you um, what else we've added since last time. Right. Here's our there's our there's our mantis shrimp lapel pin. Tree frog. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you, Patrick. I've never drawn ever in my life a mantis shrimp. So it's so funny, we we've determined that the poison dart tree frog is the Mantis shrimp of the trees, and the mantis shrimp. Fuck. What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here. Zeke, Zeke, go. Go in the bedroom right now. Go.
It's fucking cancer, man. Marky was out there and I just heard all the scuffle. Oh my god. Tiffany, what is up? Welcome. So this is the uh, these are the, this is the mantis, mantis shrimp. Just drew a mantis shrimp lapel pin right there. Things are evolving here. We got the eucalyptus juju energy drink up there. so far. Is he hurt? No. Plus the way that the cats are screaming, it's like you never know if they actually even touch each other or not, or... What a terrifying surprise. Patrick, thank you so much for coming by. And remember, the owls are not what they seem. Thank you for the suggestions, Patrick. So Tiffany, this um this is this whole thing has been completely improvised. Improvised in the moment. Bearded vampire. Remember, and I, you know what, Tiffany, you know what? I actually talked about you in your art show. Um, Tiffany, I talked about your art show to the folks, and of course, of course you popped in. This was yesterday I was talking about you in the art show that you invited me to live paint at, and I did that mask of uh, Frankenstein with a beard. So this is a vampire. Uh, he craves koala blood. He loves the eucalyptus juju. And so I've been taking suggestions from people as to what to add. As to what to add to this. And so this is completely improvised. The tree's on fire. He's getting his peacock feathers on fire. Snail here is trying to put it out with the fire extinguisher. Thank you for saying that, Tiffany. Thank you for bringing all those awesome artists together. To, uh, to meet each other and to for them to uh, sell their art. Tiffany, did you ever use an, an opaque projector? Did you ever use one of those? Just telling someone earlier about the opaque projector. Thank you, Patrick. Yes, like what teachers use. Yeah, the opaque. Well, um, let's see. Let's see. I. I guess yeah. That that is that is that you know that that's true. That is that is an opaque projector of sorts, like what you're talking about. What the teachers use. Um, there's also an art like in my art class in in high school. We had. Uh, my teacher had, well, for use for us, 
it was called he called it the opaque projector and um, you could actually put the art you know in like inside of it so it is face down or face up or what have you and then it would that image would filter up through it and then it would project it onto a wall and then you could just trace over that art and it really helped for like if you wanted to um like the artist ed paschke used that a lot and it helped out a lot like if you want to do let's say family portraits or you know and you really want to make sure that you got it down perfect rather than sort of freehanding it and eyeballing it and going oh you know i'm gonna just sort of try to make this to scale you could actually really do it to scale because it would it would blast it um the exact proportions upon a wall and uh i loved it i love the opaque projector i've always wanted to get one of those and it's so funny because just not until now not till today t until i started talking about it again that I realized that that was something that I had always wanted, but then forgot about getting, and now I want one again. It's great for painting. It's great for drawing large, large things on the wall. And I'm sure, so, like the opaque projector that I'm referring to way back in the day, it was like almost like a big square, very heavy, and he had to move it around on a, uh, like a four-wheeled cart. This thing was heavy. It was like a, it was like a robot. It's like made out of iron or something. And uh, and you'd scoot it around and bam, it would blast it up on a wall. I guess these days, you know, you could hmm. Sure they've I'm sure they've simplified it, made it lighter. Found more innovative ways to, to make them these days. The clear gels over the light at bottom and the magnifier buff. Yes, there were those. There were those, yeah, Glamid, yes, there were those that the teachers would use, yeah, clear gel over it. So it was very similar to that. It was similar to that. Um. Oh, oh, Shaylee, so you used one of those. Yeah, okay, okay, gotcha. So Glamma, think about this. Yes, so imagine that idea. Imagine what you're talking about with the clear gel. You know, they got the clear gel, and they're scribbling over the top of it, and it's shooting it up on the wall. However, with that, you couldn't put a piece of art like this over it and have that beam up on the wall because it, it necessitated a clear, you know, the clear thing that was coming down to do it. Maybe, oh my God, no, actually, yeah, that's right, because they would flip this over, right? Yeah, that was an opaque projector. Yeah, that's right, because, right, couldn't they? Because they would show worksheets. They would show the worksheets. they flip it over and there it was. Yes, okay, there we go. There it is. That's it. Yeah, opaque projector. So imagine, let's say, for instance, if I want to turn this into a painting and I wanted to get the same dimensions and everything, put that baby into an opaque projector, shoot it up on a wall, uh, trace it, trace exactly what this is up there, and then I could paint it. I am planning on taking a photo of this and then um, adding, you know, so I have the black and white version and then I'm going to then draw uh, or um, color on top of it. Probably with markers, possibly crayons. Markers might bleed and get muddy. You know, once it touches the black here, it'll, the behavior will be interesting. We, we'll see, we'll see, we'll, we'll really see. Since I, you know, I don't necessarily have a 
a, a true direction um, for this So check it out, Glamody. We got the the eucalyptus juju right there. Sploosh. So these were some of the suggestions, as you know. Tiffany, if you have any suggestions, look, there's still some room in here to put stuff. Still room in there. I could put stuff in the in the. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I gotta add some details here to the tree. Feel inspired to do that right now. What's up, Craig? Ooh, hide a few Easter eggs in there. I love that idea. I love that idea, Tiffany. Okay, I'll do that. I will be hiding a little, some little Easter eggs in there. Craig, it's so cool you joined us, man. All right, so this is this is what we're doing. We're live. We're drawing. Every, basically, everything that's in here has been a suggestion from someone, uh, by someone watching a live broadcast. These are the words I've written down. I finally figured out how to save it in the archive. So I have the first session of today's first for the first of today's session saved in my archives, which I'm so so happy about. Craig, I think you um, would benefit from doing a live stream of your comedy. Just pure improv. You could base your comedy off of improv, off of the suggestions from the audience. Most of the things that have been drawn in here, I would say, well, all of these things except for a male face and body, uh... Nature and, and animals are just, you know, I've just shied away from those through the years, through, through my art. And um, so all these things, like someone says, hey, do this, and I look online, and I find out what that picture is or what that is, and it's being added to this. So this is like everybody's, you know, art project, so to speak. Tiffany's my longtime friend. Craig, say hi to Tiffany. I've known Tiffany since I moved out here in 2000. She had an art show. She invited me to paint there live. We would draw together. She's a phenomenal artist too. Tiffany, that might be something fun for you to do. I know you're a mom now. Um, but you know, I don't know. Maybe when it's nap time, maybe when, who knows, who knows? They're, they're you know, you must be Jones and to, to draw, to uh, be drawing or, or painting again. I can only imagine.
You'll have free time again. Yes. Tiffany, did you read Mad Magazine growing up? Greg, did you read Mad Magazine growing up? Were you fans of it? If so, were there any particular artists that you liked? Or uh, writers? this project where we had to um, we had to make like the aqueducts we were learning about the aqueducts um, from way back in the day Roman aqueducts and <laughs> we so I snuck E.T. into the, into the crowd. You didn't read Mad Magazine too much? Huge, huge, huge influence. Huge influence on me, man. Those artists, so good, man. Just fearless with their style. I was telling someone earlier, I, I, I've been thinking a lot about doing a Mad Magazine movie. And showing what those crazy offices must have been like back in the day. All the... Keep bumping this microphone. Um, the guys coming up with the jokes, the artists, because I, I mean, I'm sure they all shared the same space. They were there with each other. It must have been crazy. You know, and then with technology as it evolves through the years, they end up the artists just end up drawing from home and then just emailing it to the writers or the writers email it to them and maybe the people who do the layout of the magazine then they you know they're in the office oh man let's see let's see Thank you, Shaylee. You know, I, I I wanted to interview Mort Drucker before he died. Because I missed my chance with Jack Davis. He was another artist. Um, there are a few of these guys left. You know, Sergio Aragones, he's still alive. Al Jaffe. So I could ask these guys, you know, I could still interview them and see what's going on. There's a great movie about, um, oh, let me plug my phone in. 
Gotcha. There's a great movie about National Lampoon. Do you guys remember that, that magazine? National Lampoon. Phenomenal. Just a great... Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. Go chase that baby. Thank you. Taking off the microphone. Putting in the... Uh, let's see if we can get this charging. But National Lampoon um, was a magazine. And if, and if you have to go too, Shaylee, don't worry about it. Do not worry about leaving me here. Because I'm just going to keep drawing. Any suggestions you have, Shaylee? Any suggestions? This is what we got so far. Is there something you'd like me to add to this? Look at We've still got some room over in the corners here. And the word balloon. There's space. There's still space for your imagination to flow into this. I thought it was so awesome that your mom hopped on yesterday. That was really cool. It was really cool. I could tell you're a really close family. And you appreciate each other. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, your makeup is really cool. Have you thought about doing it, or maybe you already do it? Do you do cosplay? Do you go out to uh, any of the comic book conventions or any of that? Any of that razzmatazz? I bet you a lot. And if you don't, I bet you a lot of those cosplay gals would love to have you um, as their makeup artists. You know, they would love to have have you helped them out with perfecting certain looks that joker makeup was really cool Who'd you go for as Halloween last year? That's another question. I know I'm bombarding you with questions here. Who'd you go for as Halloween? Oh, your sister? Oh, 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 you do the hair. That's right. Oh, gosh, that's right. That's just the hair. That's right. She sent me a, uh, a thing of her Joker makeup. You two would be a great team for cosplayers, I gotta tell ya. I gotta tell ya. Roar. That's right, she's Roar, Riley. That's right, that's right. Pardon my French for the mix up. Have you thought about doing, um, oh, she's done crazy makeup on you? I bet that's fun. You're like, hey, you know what? I don't look like poison ivy. Do it. Go. So you're her model for makeup, and she must be your model for hair then, right? It's a fair trade-off. You get to experiment on each other. Have you given her some crazy haircuts in the past? Like, hey, you know what? Today, you're going, you're getting a mohawk. 
Today, I'm giving you three pigtails. Yes, I bet. Now's the perfect time to practice that stuff. Perfect time. Perfecto, perfecto. So I've got one of these faulty cords. I don't want to say faulty, but I don't have a real iPhone, uh, you know, officially branded iPhone cord. And so I don't know if you've had one of those before, but they they tend to... Um, when you plug them in and out of your phone enough, after some time, they stop really wanting to work with you. So that's kind of going on now. I can't quite tell if it's if it's just going to cut out on me or not. The battery's dying. So whichever comes first, whether it's the end of this broadcast or the end of the uh, the battery life, it's been fun hanging out with you. Yeah, you've had your fair share of those, yeah. You're going to go to Fitum? My friend Tiffany, who is just in here, she went to Fitum. Makeup and design... They do hair. What is up, Grace Bands? Yeah, dude, check it out, Grace Band. Look at... In honor of you, so Glamma D earlier on... Look at this. So they said... They said spilled can of... Spilled can of soda, right? Then Glamma D said call it eucalyptus juju. EJJ. Look at that. Sploosh. In honor of you, we, we laughed about it. She remembered that you said that. Is that second koala possibly seeking revenge? This one seeking revenge? I think that's a good idea. That's good. Yeah. Look at it. How many licks to the center of a koala? Oh, criminal justice, Shaylee! Holy cow! Is that is that a is that a uh, passion of yours? So this is a shrimp mantis mantis shrimp. Been going online for some reference. Someone wanted a a, a lapel pin. They thought it'd be good. So I th and then someone else said a mantis shrimp, and I thought, okay, that's that's what the lapel pin is going to be. Someone mentioned a poison dart tree frogs, and of course he's he's piggyback riding on this guy. So I'm, you know, just having a blast adding all of this. And of course, Don Martin, like in uh, Mad Magazine, is always putting the sound effects. Sploosh. Purr. I'm just adding and adding. You know, of course, in typical Mad Magazine fashion, parody fashion, I had to throw. Someone mentioned a, an, a, oh, my little, my little uh, niece said owl. Someone else said, oh, what about the Tootsie Roll owl? So that's your passion. Criminal Criminal justice, that's great. Those courtrooms are corrupt. Those courtrooms are corrupt, so. What's going on? What is going on, Cal's caddy? We are drawn, we are moving, we are grooving. I'm taking the suggestions. Look, there are still spots up in the word balloon where we can add things. So if you got any suggestions, over here on the left side, we still got room to add things. So, Shaylee, here's a little fun fact. Whenever I get called into jury duty, I never have to go in for jury duty because I stand up and I I speak my mind to the uh, judges and the lawyers there in the court, tell them how corrupt it is. I got a friend who's a judge, a friend who's a lawyer, and a friend who works for city council. So I get to hear all the behind-the-scenes stuff. I've got a solution. I've got a solution that could work really well. Um, instead of courtrooms. It would work perfectly in, in, instead of courtrooms. Plus, all these lawyers wouldn't have to um, spend all this money on going to college and then having to rape and pillage, you know, society, you know, millions of dollars to, so they can pay off their college loans. It's a very, very s simple, easy yeah, they don't, they don't like me in the jury duty.
places. I, st I just stand right up there and speak my mind. And uh, they choose not to have me in there. <laughs> I speak directly to the uh, court reporter. I make sure that they're typing it all down. It's, it's a lot of fun. I get a lot of boos and hisses from the other jurors. They're like, boo, hiss, boo. Because I, cause I don't, that's the thing. I don't want to be in there doing, doing jury duty, getting $15 a day. It's ridiculous. Here these people are getting $15 a day to, you know, some of them have people at home they got to take care of. They're, they've got families to take care of. They're getting $15 a day. Then they still got to pay for parking out in the parking lot. What? It's ridiculous, man. Yet the lawyers are asking for $15 million in, in damages and mental whatever, whatever's. It's crazy. We demand $15 million because of this and another $2 million because of that. And it's like, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe if whoever the winner is of this thing were to split up some of that money among the jurors, maybe I'd stick around. Maybe I'd stick around and I'd give you my opinion on things. But, you know, because so in the beginning, you know, they give you their, your numbers and they say, is there any reasons why? What do they say? What do they say? Basically, the only way you can really get out of jury duty is if um, you have doctor's note saying that you're just mentally incapable and you need to be removed permanently. So I'm looking, so if any of you who know a doctor I can talk to, um, my excuse will be, I get anxious around criminals. Um, I don't like the courtrooms. I have loud outbursts and I can't, you know, it's just not good. Um, but in the meantime, if they call me in for jury duty, basically the, the other way that you can get out of it is if you have your own home business, if you work from home. So at the last time I was called in for jury duty, I, I was still editing wedding videos. And I could have just left it at that. But, you know, I was just a wise guy about it. I could have just left it at that. Say, you know what, I can't do it because I own my own business. You know, I can't leave it. And that, that could have been it. It could have gotten me out of it. That could have been simple. But no, I said, and furthermore, I don't believe in the system. And sorry, Shaylee, and this is not, you know, nothing against you. There's nothing against you. Of course. I'm just letting you know. And I love seeing justice. I love seeing justice done. I think if we... Um, Yeah, I let them know. I said, you know what? I got a, oh, full-time caretaker? Oh, so they will let you go if you're a full-time caretaker? Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, they didn't want... So in, in that v beginning process, we didn't even get to the stage of them deciding who was going to be jurors yet. It was all based on whether someone spoke up and said something or not. It was so funny. Everyone's like, ah, oh, boo. Oh, come on, boo. It was so funny. I said, if any of you guys want to, I can talk to you outside about how we we could make this a much easier process for the justice system, where it wouldn't waste any of your time. And um, and you know, it it would take very few people. And uh, it, ha it has to do with clairvoyance. It has to do with empaths. You know, there are different, there are different uh, versions of clairvoyance. There's clairaudio, the people who hear things. They're clairvisual, the empaths, they feel the things. So if, if we put more... Um, that's what I'm thinking of. If we didn't look at clairvoyance or psychics as like just funny novelty acts, like, oh, that's so cute, you know. Oh, read my palm. Ha ha ha. Hey, read my palm. Ha ha ha. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, if we looked at the skills that these people have, which to me are just 
just as scientific as any scientific exper- uh, uh, scientific in- instrument out there. Um, so you get, so this is what you do. So let's say a guy is, um, let's say a lady claims that she's been raped by a guy and they end up finding him who she thinks is him. And he's like, no, no, it's not me, not me. This is what they would do. This is my plan. Do you guys want to hear my plan? I'll tell you my plan only if you want to hear it. I'm not going to just give you un, uh, unsolicited advice. But I got an idea. I got an idea, and I think it would work. But it's got to be tested. It's got to be tested. I think it would work. Okay, so this is what it would. Do. This is what it would be. It would involve the polygraph, of course. It would involve someone who is a master at neuro-linguistic programming. It's otherwise known as NLP. Neuro-linguistic programming. That means mind language programming. Check it out. It's quite fascinating. A simple way of a, a, a simple way of NLP is basically body language. You know, people can read body language. You can see kind of what's going on in people's minds based on their body language. Well, there are all kinds of extra ways to see what's going on in people's minds based on their their eye accessing cues, the way that they hold themselves, the the specific language that they're using. I mean, it gets really deep. Micro expressions. So you get someone who's good at NLP. You get the clairvoyance. That one that's clear audio, one that's clear video, v- uh, visual, one that's empath. So, you, so they they're covering all the bases in terms of the senses. Maybe you even get a blind person in there too, whose senses are really heightened. Um, so they are standing behind. Like what is that? One way is that one way mirror or two way mirror? I forgot what it's called, but you know, like those interrogation rooms. You got the, you got what's going on in here, and you got the people behind the glass these people in here can't see what's going on with the people behind the glass so the people behind the glass are the clairvoyance and the nlp you know maybe we get like two nlp people in there hello erica so the people behind the glass are here the people one way mirror thank you shaley they're over here the people on this side this is the dude who is who is you know or lady or whoever that's that's accused of this crime breaking into the liquor store, the, the person who raped the other person, whatever, whatever, whatever. In there is the polygraph test. It's very calm. Maybe you play some binaural beats like we got in the background here. Very calm. Very calm. Um, you pump in the sound of calming music into that room. You pump in smells that induce calmness, okay? Okay. Because like in a courtroom, everybody knows in a courtroom, it's anxious in there. It's like, ah, it's crazy. People are, it's like, you can't, you can't, um, you can't, you know, there's, everybody's, it's like crazy. You know, people are feeling attacked. They're, they're, you know, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot going on in there. But you do this in a calming environment, few people as possible, no lawyers, no jurors, all clairvoyance and neuro-linguistic programming specialists okay they are all watching through the one-way glass this person in this room with this they got the polygraph test now we've heard so many times that polygraph tests can be you know messed up or who knows what this person in the chair they they don't have a lawyer there's no lawyer it's just purely that person there's no there's no you know lawyers are like magicians okay Yes, I know, I know, but we're adding it. Yes, I know, Shaylee, but we're adding it in addition. Remember, we're adding the polygraph test in a very calming way. Remember, this room is filled with calming music. It's filled with, you know, calming smells. So listen, check it out, check it out. The polygraph test is there. It's not not all based on that. On this side, we got the, the clairvoyance over here. So the clairvoyance on this side of the one-way glass along with the neuro-linguistic programming experts, 
they are watching, listening, feeling, sensing the story that this person is, that they're listening to the questions that this person is asking this person. Um, here, here we go. Clairvoyance. Those are the clear audio, visual, empaths. Like I said, maybe, you know, even a couple of blind, um, maybe, maybe we got some blind and deaf people in there too, just for kicks. I ju these are new ones that I just added. They're behind this glass. In here, got the person at the table, it, you know, we got the polygraph test here. This is the person who's accused of doing the, cr the you know, the crime. Calming music, calming music, calming smells, okay? All in here. Very calm, very calm, very calm. Asking questions, asking questions, asking questions. This person is answering, okay? So, these people are not talking to each other. They're just feeling. They're just seeing what they're seeing. Maybe they're sitting in seats. They're writing down, they're writing down what they're noticing, what they're feeling, what they're sensing. Then... Then, after that, these people reconvene. This person goes to the jail cell or wherever they came from. These people reconvene with this person, and they match up what's on the polygraph test with the vibes that each of these people got as they were listening to the testimonies. So it becomes a Venn diagram. You know, Venn diagram. What matches up? In this case, we'd have, you know, where does it match up? So that's how we solve. That's my, my idea as to how we actually solve courtrooms and lawyers. We get the actual truth. And then, heck, there's, there's no harm in, in doing this a couple of more times. All right, so you guys, we've got two minutes remaining here. As promised, I will end this broadcast at the end of, th of, this, of this two minutes. Thank you guys for all of your suggestions. There are so many suggestions that I've, I've added to this. I'll continue to create this. I'll continue to do this more. Um, tune in tonight. These are all based on things that you guys suggested. Thank you, Shaylee. I love hearing you say that. It's worth a try, you know? Um... Because, you know, the clear visuals, they're going to see things. The people who feel things are going to feel things. They're going to really feel what's going on. And then you do the same thing. You get into the room, same thing. You get the person with their testimony now. So you get the good, the good guy and the bad guy, so to speak. Bam, sitting in that seat, same thing. They go through the same thing. Find the Venn diagrams. Bam. No need for a million dollar, you know, whatever. The lawyer's asking for all kinds of money. Saves money on college, right? college loans. So this is what we've done so far over the course of two days. And it's all thanks to all of you adding your suggestions. Now, tonight, Yachtly Crew, Yachtly Crew, I'm typing it here real quick before this 42 seconds is gone. Tonight, um, Yachtly Crew on YouTube is going to be broadcasting live another live stream from a show we did. We'd love to see you in there. We'll be on YouTube. If you got if you got YouTube, sign in. We'll be in the chat bar hanging out. I'll be signed in as Inspirato Projecto again. Thank you so much for all of the fun, all of the laughter, all of the ideas. Thank you.